Tony, should we lower the bar? Should we start screening, you know, high school seniors for colon cancer? <laughs> well, so the limitations, even if we consider that mm. as an option, the limitation will be that you will get even less compliance in that group of, pati group of patients than with the elderly. This remains a, a disease predominantly of those above 50. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think although the, the, the incidence is rising in the younger patients, and we'd hate to see younger patients with colon cancer, it's still uh, uh, not a disease. I that wonder if that's because you live in a retirement community. Because I, I, <laughs> I, in my world, half no, I, my clinic is under 50 right now. We, we see 30-year-old women yeah. with children sure. with colon cancer. We see a lot of the younger patients because, again, you know, they come, they yeah. come to, to Mayo from, from the whole region. The, 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 the point, though, I, it, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. Uh, but I think we just don't understand it as well. And to justify doing colonoscopy for, you know, close to 200 million people right. a year now. Right, compliance, or, or, risk. Well, and yeah. I, I wanted to add to Tony's really good point that um, the screening question is really a different question. I think that what we can do with the rising population of younger patients is raise awareness about symptoms that need to yeah. be followed up on quickly. Um, because the story that we hear from our young patients year after year is that they had symptoms that were either ignored or blown off or not followed up on in an aggressive manner. And because of this rise, I think that the, the, you, you know, one of the maneuvers that we can do in the absence of, a, of completely revising the, the U.S. Preventive Task Force recommendations is to, is to raise awareness among especially primary care physicians. Yeah, so I was thinking the same. So rectal bleeding or GI bleeding in a 33-year-old with some hemorrhoids, scope them. Don't just blame it yes. on the hemorrhoids and yeah, yeah. try to make that yes. early diagnosis. So quicker trigger finger, trigger finger at essentially doing a workup. And we want to be careful, too, because then we end up in a situation where everyone will end up, regardless of uh, maybe a little bleed, maybe a justifiable reason to have a symptom that's changed. We don't want everyone to have to undergo expensive colonoscopies. That's a significant burden on the healthcare system that's already relatively broke, as, as, as we know. So I think we have to bring awareness to the primary care physicians, uh, to the patients, without instilling paranoia, though. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if you think I'm crazy, but I've been watching this sort of science space of the microbiome, of the bacteria that live in our colons, and, and we know now that there are some good ones and some bad ones and protective, and there are different ones on the right side and different ones on the left side. <laughs> and, and one emerging theory is that young people, this group of young people, antibiotics early, wash yeah. their hands all the time, you know, don't go out and play in the backyard, don't, as I say, don't eat enough dirt. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do you all see that emerging too as that's coming out in, as maybe a way to screen for these young folks? Yeah, I mean, not being an expert in this area, but there's some, I followed the science peripherally and there's some really interesting science going on about my, microbiome shifting that's happening as a result of multiple factors, including not just antibiotics that are given in a medical setting, but antibiotics that are in the food supply. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and the shift from um, y y sort of traditional anaerobes to facultative anaerobes uh, in various parts of the colon. Um, the importance of the APC gene and how it fits into both colorectal cancer and the health of the epithelium of the colon. So that whole area of science, I think, is a really important, and I think we'll be thinking about this very differently in a decade. So I, this brings back the problem that is a social problem of industrial food, processed food versus more natural food or organic food. Maybe uh, we are uh, creating a lot of problems and we are creating a lot of diseases. Yeah. As we all but we're also living longer and we got to feed each other. So that's the push and pull of, uh, you know, the, the, the issues there. And I'll throw this out. Anybody got a liquid biopsy that we should be getting from our primary care doctors? I mean, we don't think CEA well, is that, but is there a, no, is there a gene test or something that's coming well, that's, to help detect? That, that's clearly uh, what I was meaning with this stepwise approach in screening. So we say already today we're not offering many countries uh, just FOBT, meaning fecal occult blood test. We're already offering enzymatic. Hmm. Tests, which in the for feces, the blood in the for feces, the, right, yeah. and from the blood, of course, the the uh, this is super promising to see uh, DNA, shedded DNA, shed DNA in the in the blood of patients, which could be correlated with the tumor. I think this as a kind of pre-screening, and then colonoscopy will be clearly the future. I want to cover one more area in this, and that is we each give recommendations to our patients who've had colon cancer of how to prevent the cancer from coming back or preventing new cancers. So on the list for me, and I'll love you guys to fill in, is exercise, 
um, aspirin in certain patients, but I'm sort of saying everybody at this point, uh, vitamin D and chasing those levels yes. and, and supplementing as you can. But then at this meeting, nuts. Have you all seen this abstract? Yes. So sh should I go off and, uh, it's not peanuts, right? It's tree nuts. Yeah, right. So everybody yeah. understands. Is this something, I've already gotten 20 emails from patients. Yes. Anybody in on well, the nuts? I, 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 you know, these, these data around, especially Mediterranean diet, of course, mm. have been around mm. for a long time. In fact, the, in the CLGB adjuvant study, we had a very powerful analysis of Mediterranean diet versus the sort of traditional American diet. And I, I have wondered whether the data about nuts are actually a marker of a, di of a different style of eating. Yeah. So people include tree nuts in their diet, uh, probably have a different way, right. approach to eating in general. We went to Costco right after this came <laughs> out, and we couldn't find, you know, the Ben O nuts that you get yeah. at Costco. But you know, this is, I guess, any? typically American, and unfortunately, very little different in some European countries, that you are trying to pay, make, in this country, everything has a, a drug. Mm. So basically, you take this, you take <laughs> yeah. vitamin D, but maybe you have yeah. just to do a normal life that yeah. is uh, yeah. exposure to yeah. sunlight, yeah. Is a, uh, exercise, yeah. a normal diet yeah. where you balance everything, putting everything together, because otherwise you kill some uh, foods because you consider yeah. the enemies, but yeah. you can eat them. I, I just, it's just a matter of balance and a matter of uh, you eating everything. We are, uh, we eat everything, everything as a species. We are not lions or we are not, you know, like <laughs> buffaloes. We, we are somewhere in the middle. I know some lions and buffaloes actually, but uh, we, we, di we digress. I tell my patients in the vitamin D stories, I say go out, have lunch outside yeah. without right. sunblock. Mm -hmm. That's just about the right amount of yeah. uh, vitamin yeah. D conversion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's great. Anybody have any other additional comments or uh, advice you would give to a patient uh, to prevent co cocktail party advice for prevention of colorectal cancer? Did we cover everything you know? I think that that pretty much covers it. But you know, going back to, a little bit to the story of the nuts, mm. the nuts you know have been st have been looked at actually in other diseases, cardiovascular diseases, cholesterol, etc. And actually, they do provide health benefits across the board. I mean, the same when you give that aspirin, you're preventing more than just colon cancer. So, you know, for Trinata's point is that, you know, a healthy lifestyle means a balanced high lifestyle. We tend to be busy. We tend to just, you know, say, okay, I'm, I'm going to have my energy bar this morning, but I'll take my multivitamins. That is not a good supplement.